So in our previous uh, set of notes, there was an example that we looked at dealing with the uh, cell phone company that was charging a certain amount per minute with a certain uh, service, fee, service charge. Um, the question is always asked, well, what happens if there's a four and a half minute phone call? Do you get, does it get rounded up or rounded down? Well, that que question actually leads into what we're going to be talking today with step functions. Because there are situations where uh, you do pay a flat amount um, and that amount is either going to be rounded up or down if you have a decimal amount. Like if we have a three and a half minute phone call or a three minute and two second phone call. Would it get rounded up to four minute phone call or would it be rounded down to a three minute phone call? And again, that's called the step function. Now let's look at this example. This example is dealing with um, certain costs to mail uh, letters. And look at, look, so notice how there's an asterisk here. So what this is referring to is uh, the fact that these rates are for a flat, uh, is, uh, they're a flat rate up to and including the given weight. So what that means is that if we go to ship something that weighed a half an ounce, it's going to be rounded up to one ounce, and we're going to be charged 70 cents to, to ship that. Or if there was something that was 9.2 ounces, if it was 9.2 ounces, we're going to get rounded up to a 10 ounce package and it would cost us two dollars and 23 cents. Another way to look at that is by looking over here at this graph. We're going to talk about how to graph these here in a little bit. But just to look at what a graph of a step function looks like, you can see why it's called a step function because it looks like a set of stairs. Now let's look at some things uh, that are unique about this graph. So notice how there are uh, solid points here and there's also open circles. Anytime you see a, an open circle when it's graphed, that means that the point at that spot is not included. Uh, so what this means for this graph is that these open point circles, the line doesn't start there, it starts immediately after it. So in other words, a three ounce package is going to cost a little over a dollar. It's not going to cost a uh, dollar twenty-five, whatever that is. A three ounce package is going to cost, like I said, it's going to be this price, not this one. So, like I said, if we had a 9.2 ounce package, so that's a little over 9 ounces, that means that the cost is going to be about $2.25 by looking at the graph. So that's a step function. So let's talk some more about these. So we have uh, two different types of step functions. We have what's called a floor function or a ceiling function. And we use some symbols to identify those. We use these uh, brackets with the brackets on the ground, no brackets at the top, uh, for to represent a floor function. And a ceiling function would be these brackets with a little, it basically looks like an upside down L. These aren't absolute value. These aren't, uh, these don't make a number going from negative, doesn't make it positive. An easy way to remember it is if the brackets are at the ground, that means we're going to round down because it's a floor function. If the brackets are at the top, that means we're going to round up because it's a ceiling function. Um, these just give you some other words that we might refer to these as. Uh, this next paragraph here, um, the key here, or one thing to make sure that you understand, is I blew it up to so make it e easier to see. But sometimes you might see it written in other textbooks in a different way. Um, for a rounding down function, We'll always see it as these brackets at, at the bottom. But sometimes if you see something written like this, where you see these double brackets, that also means that we're going to round down. And again, the ceiling function is also called the rounding up function. But we'll refer to these as the ceiling function and the floor function, just to be consistent. So let's look at some things written as ceiling and floor functions and see what we do with them. So. 5 is 7 eighths. This is the floor function of 5 and 7 eighths. So since it's a floor function, that means we're going to round down. Even though you might say, well, it's really close to 6, well, anything in these situations, anything um, past the number, we still round down. Even if it was 5.99, we would round this down to 5. So 5 and 7 eighths. If we were to simplify that for the floor function, our answer would be 5. Now where this gets tricky is when we deal with negative numbers. 
So if you think about a floor function, that means we round down to the left on the number line. If it's a ceiling function, we round up to the right of the number line. So if you think about where negative 4.2 would be on a number line, it would be right about here. So negative 4.2, if I round down, that's actually going to be rounded down to negative 5. Be very careful. A common mistake with, with these is when dealing with negative numbers, thinking that negative 4.2, you'd round that down to negative 4. Well, if you rounded that to negative 4, you're actually rounding it up because you're going to the right on the number line. Pi, well, that's 3.14, so if that's a ceiling function, so that means I'm going to round that up to 4. And if there is no decimal, like 13, it stays the same. Okay, so once you give the other four uh, problems a shot and see if you can uh, get those correct, so once you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, so here we have 6 and 2 thirds. It's a floor function, so it means we're going to round that down to 6. Negative 10.01, again, if you have a hard time uh, thinking about where these would be. Negative 10.01, well, that's just past negative 10. But this is a floor function, so that means we're going to round it to the left. So that would be negative 11. 2 pi is the same as 2 times 3.14, which gives you 6.28 approximately. Oops. So since it's a ceiling function, this means we round it up to 7. And 27 is not a decimal, so we leave that as 27. Now let's look at how we, so we looked at the functions. Now let's look at how we graph the functions. So we want to graph this function. Remember, f of x is the same as y equals. So what you want to do, whoops, what you want to do is you want to set up an xy table. And we're just going to put some numbers in there for x, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I put negative 2 in there, again, this doesn't make it uh, positive. It stays the same. It's not a decimal, so if I go to graph this, I want x is negative 2, y is going to be negative 2. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so you need to see nothing's changed there. So negative 2, negative 2 would be here. Negative 1, negative 1 would be here. But again, these are step functions. It's not a linear function. We'll connect them to the line. What I do now is I put in some decimals. Like, let's say if I put in uh, 1.3. If I put 1.3 in there, oops, that means I'd round it down to 1. If I put 2.8 in there, that means I'd round it down to 2. So what I'm going to do here is 1.3, it's right about here, get thrown it up to 1. So notice that's to the right of the point I already graphed, meaning this graph is going to go, whoops, is going to go to the right. Just to check again, 2.8, here's 2, here's 2.8, that's going to be rounded down to 2, which would be right here. So that, again, that's to the right of that other point, so that means that Anytime we're dealing with a floor function, the steps go to the right. And our open circle is always going to fall underneath the point that we graphed. Because if I were to graph when x is 2, when x is 2, to figure out what y would be, we would go through that point, and our value would be when x is 2, y is going to be 2. So an open circle, again, means that that point, at that spot, is not included. Okay, let's look at graphing a ceiling function. That was a floor function. So now let's look at graphing a ceiling function again. Just to make sure we're getting off to the right, on the right foot here, let's start by setting up an xy table. Pick some numbers for x. And put them in here and see what happens. Well, since there's nothing going on here with the x, when I put negative 2 in there, it stays a negative 2. Now just a note on this, if you did have... Oops. If you did have something like this on your assignment, you would put negative 2 in here. Simplify. These are grouping symbols, so you would simplify inside the grouping symbol first and then figure out what you do with it. So if I had a situation like this, I'd take negative 2 plus 4 and get a positive 2, and so then in that case, my answer would be a positive 2 that I'd put down here for y. But otherwise, if there's nothing going on, it just stays the same. Negative, because again, if it's a decimal, it doesn't, if it's not a decimal, it doesn't change. 
put negative 1 in there, it stays a negative 1. Put 0 in there, it stays a 0. Put 1 in there, it stays a 1, and 2, and so on. Now you might say, oh, wait a minute, these are the same points that we just graphed in the previous one, which these solid points are for this particular example. But let's say now if we had 1.3. Well, for a ceiling function for 1.3, this would mean that you'd round this up to 2. Or if I had 2.8, this means you'd round it up to 3. So to figure out where our steps are going to be to the left or right of these initial points, what we do is we put, if I look at this, 1.3. 1 1.3 1 is a little bit past 1. So I'm going to round that up to 2, so that's right here. I'm going to sell that's to the left of this point that I have. 2.8 is almost all the way to 3 there. So I'm going to round that up to 3. So again, that's the left of the dot that I put in originally. So what that means is that every point, like if I had 2.1, I'd still round that up to 3. If I had 2.5, I'd round that up to 3. Any point after 2 is going to be rounded up to 3. So that's why the step is going to be to the left of what I have there. So as far as having a rule that will always be true, anytime we're dealing with a floor function, the step will go to the right. So an easy way to remember that is floor goes to the right. There's no really way to easy to remember there's no really easy way to remember that a ceiling function, whoops. goes to the left, but you'll just have to remember floor goes to the right, so ceiling goes to the left. Okay, so in the, so we've talked about um, what to do with the floor function, round up or round down. We've talked about what the graph looks, graphs look like for floor functions and ceiling functions. In the next video, we're going to look at some story problems to see how this gets applied. So go ahead and watch that next video so you can know how to work these problems out.